everybody. This is Reefer James and Reefer James' Reef Underground. Welcome back to my channel. It's been quite a while since I've put out a video as always and uh, I'm getting ready to build another one of these. This is my do-it-yourself I call it my do-it-yourself monster algae turf scrubber. I've been running this thing for, God, I would say about six years now, maybe more. Thanks to one of my buddies who mentioned, mentioned to me a long time ago, he said, you know, James, you need to build you a turf scrubber, man. He said, turf scrubber will control your nitrates and your phosphates for you. And, uh, this guy's YouTube name is Mr. Warrior Pro. I give credit to where credit's due. And you know what, guys? After six years of ru running this thing, um, with all due respect, and no lies here, six years, and I was skeptical, you know, skeptical just like anybody else, I wasn't going to build it, you know, and I was like, yeah, you know, I've seen a few of them on YouTube, I've seen a few guys running some, and the question was always to myself, do they really work? So, you know, I had nothing to lose, you know, and, uh, I decided, you know, after many, many, many years of running bio pellets and running carbon and running here and there through the years running GFO off and on, and nothing seemed to work, man. You know, the bio pellets, they, they would control the phosphates <clears throat> pretty decent, but it wouldn't control my nitrates in my trigger tank. Don't know why. Just never did. I ran MPX Bioplastics for months at a time trying to see if they worked, you know. Currently, at the time, my trigger tank was a 80 ppm nitrates all the time. And luckily for me, my uh, pink tail trigger is a hardy enough fish to withstand it. But my Corin, he got Popeye over it, so I had to switch him to my display tank. Um, this is hooked up to my display tank with the uh, sailfin tang and the corin. They help eat the algae too out of the tank. I no longer have any kind of cleanup crew. All I have uh, is miracle mud in the sump. I had to switch it from the trigger tank, from the hospital tank to the trigger tank, and then back to the display tank. And I did away with my skimmer for a while, and then I put on my Hang in the Back Octopus Classic BP-2000 on the side of my display tank, which in the next video I'll cover. It's a monster skimmer, and it, it works well. And uh, even though I'm running a turf scrubber, the skimmer is pulling out a lot of dark um, organics from the water from the scrubber actually it's it's actually pulling a lot of food and a lot of tint of the green tint from the algae uh, from the scrubber but it doesn't seem to affect the scrubber at all the scrubber still grows algae now I know it looks kind of dark it is pretty dark in some areas but the pink lights are on so um, it is there's a lot of it on the screens that are green I'll turn the regular lights on in a minute just to show you. But uh, getting back to what I was talking about, so yeah, six years ago or so, I decided, well, Mr. Warrior Pro, you know, I'm going to build me an algae scrubber. I'm going to build a big one. And this is my version of a 55-gallon barrel cut sideways for a trough. I built a 2x4 stand and I bought these 36 inch lights, LED lights, which is more in the pink spectrum. They're uh, full spectrum lights, but they're more pinkish than anything, more in the 600, 660, 600 to 660 NM range uh, Kelvin, if that's what you want to call it. I don't think they call uh, 
ultraviolet light Kelvin. I'm not sure. They call it NM. Nano something. Nanometers? <laughs> i got to look into it again. But anyway, the algae seems to grow better with the pink spectrum. So I built it, you know, and uh, I ran it the first year. I was still skeptical until after about a year and a half, a year, it took about a year, maybe less, I started noticing as I was doing my salifer test kits that the nitrates were undetectable and my phosphates. So I was using the salifert nitrate tests and phosphate tests and to tell you the truth I do use salifert calcium magnesium and alkalinity tests exclusively I won't use anything else they're very accurate they're easy to do but the phosphate and the nitrate test kits from salifert are kinda they're kinda complicated when looking at the colors it's kinda hard so I use the API ones which I know a lot of you are against API test kits but they work great especially the phosphate and nitrate ones are easy to read they're easy to match on the color chart so that's what I've been using and uh, six years now guys and uh, I've had undetectable not to say that there isn't some phosphate we all know there is and there's probably some nitrates or your corals wouldn't grow and the algae wouldn't grow if there wasn't some phosphates in your system, of course. That's what it's pulling out. But when I test my tank water now, year after year, month after month, bi-monthly, my nitrates and phosphates are undetectable, guys. Undetectable. I did go through a battle in my display tank with some turf algae. I don't know why the scrubber didn't pull it and keep it from the tank, but it didn't. It spread throughout my tank, and I'm, I'm chalking it up to when I bought some live rock for my 55 and my trigger tank, I mixed a rock in with my display tank by accident or some water. And I had this last June at the same time, guys, the same time right now as this video is being taken, I started getting a plague of this turf algae. I thought it was bryopsis. Uh, for all I know and care, it probably was. I treated with reflux last June, last July, and I treated for six weeks, and it killed every bit of algae in my display tank. It didn't really, it did kind of recede the scrubber for a while, but it really didn't uh, affect it none. They say not to run the scrubber, but I did. It, it still grew algae on the screens. But every little piece of algae in, on my rocks, and it was an inch thick, guys. Uh, if you go back to my videos, you'll see. I didn't think I was going to get rid of it. I was almost ready to give up the hobby after being back into reefing for 12 years now. I have a total of 28 years of aquariums. Started out with fresh water with 150, and I had a... A 38 and a 35 on a double iron cast stand. I had a 10, uh, 15 gallon when I first started with the freshwater angelfish. And then uh, after several years of that, uh, I went right into marine tanks and was keeping a marine tank. I had a one spot damsel that grew really big and uh, just mainly fish. I never dabbled with corals. And then uh, I went through a few marriages and a few hiatuses. Um, I would get back into it for a while and back out until uh, finally in um, 2008, 2007 we bought this house and then a year after we were here, 2008, I started into marine tanks again and I, I went straight for the corals and fish, mixed systems. And so I've been running here, this display tank, for about 11 years now. And all of a sudden after... 10 years, I got a turf algae problem. So I used fluconazole. I used the reflux. I treated for six weeks and it all disappeared. It melted. I don't know where it went. It turned white after the fifth week 
And then it disappeared quickly within the sixth week, and it was totally gone, guys. Totally gone. That was last year. And that was by October or November it was gone. And since last October or November, I have been running nothing but a skimmer. I have been running no carbon. I've ran no bio pellets, no GFO. And since last October or November, I've been algae-free in my display tank thanks to the scrubber. Let's face it, guys. If, if you got an algae problem and you're not using anything in your tanks and you're running a good 8 to 10 hour light schedule on your system and you don't have some algae in your tank or a big plague, there's something wrong. I guarantee you. But with the algae scrubber, it's proven itself since last November, December now. It's now June. And I've had no algae whatsoever in my display tank. Now the Corin, he's been in the display tank pr pretty much at the same time. When he was in the 55 hospital tank before I sold the 55, I was wondering why the 55 was, was picked clean all the time. But the Angel, he was already in the display tank before I had the turf algae outbreak, and he wouldn't touch it. They didn't like the taste of it. I bought some snails, which died about a month later. Uh, they didn't like it. They wouldn't eat it. The only thing that got rid of it, guys, was reflux. And since then, I've never treated for reflux in the tank again because I think it killed off my snails and my hermit crabs and this and that. Uh, I dose pretty hard, guys. But since then, there's been nothing holding the algae away from my display tank except this scrubber. So it's proven itself again to me. I hope that I never get another turf algae problem or nothing introduced into my tank that would cause that again. I haven't had any signs of algae yet, just coralline, and I've been a happy camper. So this scrubber, it's gravity fed, as you can see to the left here down there, there's a pipe coming out below the, the 2x4, the 1x1, one one, and it goes through the wall there back into my ruby sump and through a sock, gravity fed. Over to the right side, over here, it's pumped from my ruby sump with a DC ceramic drive skims variable speed pump through a three-quarter spray bar at the top here. Okay. And I've got two macrame screens, those plastic screens you buy at Hobby Lobby or wherever. You rough them up with a hole saw to give the algae something to grow on. And you cut little squares in them at the top. And then you cut yourself some one inch ringlets here. Let me turn the light on now, guys. Okay. Still with the lights on it. It's real dark greenish. But um, if I was to turn these lights off for a second, you can see it's real, real green. It's so green, it's dark. But anyway, before you glue the pipe all together, you cut a one inch PVC tube, you cut little, little ringlets out, okay? And then you cut notches out of the ringlets. And then the one inch ringlets will fit over this three quarter tube. So all I do is turn these ringlets to where the notch goes down to the screen. And the screen is sticking up about a quarter inch into the pipe all the way across. There's two screens. I just turn these little ringlets and drop one half of the screen down, one of the screens, and clean them. The left one's due for a cleaning now, and the right one's already will be needed cleaning soon, probably by middle of this week. And that's all you do, and then you just you clean the screens off. Either you scrape them, or you can take them out and hose them. They say not to hose it off, but I do, because it grows so rapidly on this one. And I stick the screen back in there, and I turn the ringlets back up with the notches up, and it hangs on the little ringlets. Okay? The 36-inch LED lights, I was able to find them on eBay. I don't know if they still have them. But I'll be trying to find something equivalent because now, 
since this scrubber has proven itself, and guys, if you don't think this works, think again. This is something the reef industry doesn't want you to know. They don't want you to know that this will keep your nitrates and phosphates at zero. Because they want you to keep buying that GFO. They want you to keep buying those bio pellets. Okay? They want you to keep buying additives, no pox. No pox didn't work either, guys. Sorry to say. It's a waste of money. Um, it didn't do... It'll slow down your algae, but it won't get rid of it. And $28 for a big bottle of it is, you know, it starts to get expensive. All I do is bi weekly or weekly is clean one of these screens. Okay, you can see I've got two screens here. With the Skims DC variable speed drive pump. I've got 11 watts instead of a mag drive running this thing. You can see it says 11 there. I don't know if I can hold it steady. It says power 11. 11 watts to run this instead of 150 or 100 to 150 with a Danner mag drive or something equivalent. I'm doing away with the Danners. All my systems, my trigger tank, and my display system has two drives in it, one for the scrubber here and one for the system. My trigger tank system is running a DC drive pump now for the system. And now, guys, I'm ready to build another scrubber. This is how sure I am. I have another frame right to the right of it. And I'm going to go through the wall. And all the way around my display tank, around my little 20-gallon hospital tank, and back of the trigger tank into the trigger sump. To the trigger sump and back. Okay? To the trigger sump and back. And that's going to run my trigger system, my trigger tank, and control the algae that I've been battling in my trigger tank. Because I can't keep any snails or crabs the trigger he's big as your hand he'll munch them man he'll munch them i do have a sea urchin in there which is working out pretty well he won't he won't screw with the sea urchin but any kind of crab or snail he'll eat so i was having the same issue in my trigger tank i was i'm starting to get turf algae in there which I treated with reflux last week to hold down the tank, but, that, but after the reflux is gone and I'm back to normal conditions again, it's just going to come back unless I have some good way. Now, this is the key word. Some, key, uh, some, some good way, and the key word here is export. A way to export your nutrients. That's the name of the game, and the scrubber does it well. Now, I'm making this video to show you guys and to tell you a few things because a lot of you, a lot of you people don't believe in scrubbers. You're, you were skeptical, you know, skeptical like I was. I didn't know any better. But after six years of running this thing, I'll tell you what, man, I know better now. Yeah, you know, when I look through my display tank sideways through the small end, look look through my tank long ways, the water looks green. It does. But when you look through the front of it, you can't even tell. Now, I don't run carbon in my display for several reasons. One, I don't want to spend the money when the scrubber is taking out organics. And number two, which is more most important actually. My corn angels in there, and purple tangs and corn angels, Mike Paletta will even tell you, and I'm a firm believer that the carbon takes out some trace elements and leaves the angels, the angelfish, especially corn angels and purple tangs, from what Mike Paletta was talking about, susceptible to lateral line disease, which is also called hole in the head disease. They'll get little pits in their nostrils, in their head. 
and it'll eat away at their flesh and leave big pitted holes, just like a big Oscar. You ever see a big Oscar in a tang and all the hole in the head on them? Now, I've noticed with the Miracle Mud now, too, it's been healing up my corn angel. He had two spots above his eyeballs. It's went away and healed up. I did run without Miracle Mud for a while with the corn in the display tank. So he didn't really show any progress. But I've had the Miracle Mud back in the display tank now. The tank that this is scrubbers being run off of. I filled the sump with Miracle Mud again. And I'm waiting for another few months to see how his hole in the head uh, reacts to the Miracle Mud. But other than that, I don't run any activated carbon. I don't run any bio pellets. I don't run GFO. But yet my display tank for eight months now, guys, eight months, going on nine months probably, has been zero with the phosphates and zero on the nitrates. Undetectable, both levels. And as I was saying, as you know, there is always some nitrates and some phosphates in your system. You'll never get rid of all of it because you have to feed. But it's low enough for me to get by and not have any kind of algae grow except coralline in my display tank. And that, guys, is enough for me. It should be enough for you. I don't have to spend money except for my, uh, what I dose for, you know, monthly, bi-weekly, which is uh, sodium bicarbonate I use. And I use magnesium and calcium pharma pouch from bulk reef supply liquid versions. I dose it all liquid. I dose my sodium bicarbonate through a 24-7 peristaltic doser. And I dose manually with magnesium and calcium. I buy it all from bulk reef supply. But I do not use any GFO. No bio pellets no more. My bio pellet reactor, my reef dynamics is hanging on the wall. It, it was three hundred and seventy dollars, I believe, when I bought it. Maybe more. It's useless. I can't run a damn thing in it. I've tried running Fosgard in it from Seacam, and it just made a white dust. It was awful. The bio pellets it, it held my phosphates down, but it wouldn't do nothing for my nitrates. Were soaring. And I don't run GFO because the GFO is expensive. You know, it's expensive. You buy the good stuff from uh, Bulk Reef Supply. It's not cheap. You buy the premium stuff. You don't buy the cheap Two Little Fishies Foss Guard. Or Foss, uh, Foss Band, they call it. You buy the, the high capacity crap from Bulk Reef Supply. And it's expensive for a little quart of it. Real expensive, like $38 or something. 28 to 38, something like that. I'm not doing it, man. This scrubber is all that you need. So, with that, here I am. I'm letting you know. Six years now, and I wouldn't shit you, okay? Six years. And this scrubber, you see me running it. And if it didn't work, I surely as hell would take it down. Okay? But I'm not, because every time I test my display tank for nitrates and phosphates, they're always undetectable. What does that tell you? These algae scrubbers, they do work. Now, if you make a little tiny one, don't expect too much. I made a bigger one, one that's going to handle. Okay? Now, with this new stand, like I was saying, not only is it going to run my trigger tank now, because I have one... This one's for my display, but I never had one for my trigger tank, and I've been struggling with algae in my trigger tank. Not only is it going to go back and forth to my trigger tank sump, but I've also just bought a new 90-gallon, which I just built and put a new uh, top frame on it. It's right here. I know it's dark down here, guys, but uh, let me turn on the light. There it is. My new 90, it's a 90, 90 long. It's a mammoth. 
It's going to go over here where my little 20-gallon hospital tank is up against the wall where the 55 was. And so the scrubber, this new scrubber and the barrel now, I've ordered a new barrel and I'm going to cut it in half just like you saw my other one. It'll be identical. Now I've made it a little taller for the spray bar because I'm going to use bigger screens. And the reason for that because not only is this scrubber going to go back and forth to my trigger sump, my 40 gallon breeder sump, I'm going to have another DC drive. And this 90, I'm going to have two holes cut in the side at the top. One's going to gravity feed back to the trigger tank sump. And I'll have another DC drive supplying this 90 from the trigger sump. So. Not only will my trigger tank be supported by the new scrubber, but my 90 gallon will be running off the trigger system as well and be algae free as well. And I'm going to have nothing but LPSs in here, guys. I have a, a few in the 20 gallon right now as we speak. So I'm killing two birds with one stone with another scrubber. Uh, the only thing I have to deal with down here in the basement will be the humidity which today is not so bad. I might have to buy one more dehumidifier. My electric bill will go up. But I won't be buying a ton of crap trying to control this algae. Okay, guys? That's Reefer James's new direction. Hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope that uh, you've learned something about algae scrubbers and uh, what they do, what they're capable of. They really do work, guys. Don't think that they don't, because they really do. And with that, I hope you've uh, enjoyed the video. I hope you like what you see. And uh, maybe a few of you will try this on your own, and you will see. You make one big enough that will handle your system. Make it similar to mine, or maybe even a 35-gallon drum, even. I don't see why that wouldn't work. Smaller screens for a 55 tank, a 55 gallon or 75 gallon or a 90 like you just saw. You don't need such a big scrubber. And the and the good thing about it is that the algae grows on the bottom of the of the of the barrel. It's unreal. I've got copepods growing, uh, living in it. Hundreds of copepods. You can see them when the water stops. When I clean the screens, you can see them running around. Uh, even when it's running, if I look closely, you can see them all running around at the bottom of the of the scrubber tank. It's unreal. It's so beneficial for your tank. It's unreal. And uh, I'm loving it. Six years now, maybe more. I can't thank you enough, Mr. Mr. Warrior Pro. He wasn't shitting, man. Mr. Warrior Pro, you were spot on. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. And friends like that, that's, that's the kind of friends you need, man. So all of you who want to keep buying your GFO and bio pellets and, you know, no pox, spending hundreds of dollars monthly, Reflux, that's not cheap either, guys. I'm tired of buying reflux. I'm not doing it, and neither should you. This is Reefer James. Hope you've enjoyed the video. I'll be back next time with an update on my display and a few of my new corals. I got some new plates to replace my big green 7-inch in diameter plate that I lost from using reflux. Yep, lost them. I've got four more. I've got an orange plate, which was quite expensive, and I've got a pinwheel plate and two green ones. Um, and they're all doing well in the display tank, as long as my corn will quit uh, messing with the orange one. He keeps flipping it over. I might have to, as soon as I get the 90 up and running, it'll be the plates will be going in there. Uh, the bigger ones he don't seem to mess with, but the little orange one is still quite small. And I keep finding them flipped over, but. Uh, 
I also acquired a Duncan and a, a frog hammer, cross between a frog spawn and a hammer coral branching type. It's doing really well, guys. Um, I think the corn broke my candy cane in half. I found it in half the other night. He's in the hospital tank, and the heads are doing a lot better. Um, and my other branching plane hammer is coming back on one head, believe it or not, in the 20 gallon. All those will be going in the 90. The trigger fish will stay in the trigger tank. The corn and the sail fin will stay in the display tank. I'll have scrubbers running everything. And uh, I'm excited. With that, you guys take care. We're at the half hour mark. Reefer James, sign it out. Click like, subscribe. Stay tuned. I think by next week I should have a, another update on the trigger tank and the display. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. So take care. God bless. Let it roll, guys.